Let's do an example where we apply Laplacian of a Gaussian to an image. Um, this image has structures of different sizes, as you can see. And uh, we'll use MATLAB's edge function, in which you can specify to do a Laplacian of a Gaussian. Um, the zero indicates, uh, use a threshold of zero, meaning detect all zero crossings. And we'll vary the sigma from 0.2 to 20. So let me read in the image. Um, and I'll go ahead and type this value in there. And we'll show the image, um, and we'll give a title to the image so that we can see what the value of uh, sigma is. Whoops, I forgot to put the pause. Okay, so this is the Laplacian and Gaussian with a very small sigma, 0.2. And as I keep hitting enter, um, the zero crossings get much more sparse. Essentially, I'm wiping out any structures smaller than sigma. So um, now at a s scale of about 3.8, I've lost all of the... Um, fine detail in this lower part and I'm just seeing the coarser dots and as I increase and you'll notice that none of the zero no zero crossings are created they're just being merged or uh, destroyed and as, as I get up to around uh, 12 13 even these um, these large-scale structures are being destroyed and merged together One problem with Laplacian of a Gaussian is it's not very accurate. Um, for example, the location of the edge is affected by corners. That's because the Laplacian is adding those two components, namely second derivative with respect to x plus second derivative with respect to y. So those two things uh, affect each other. You can see that in the case of a uh, corner like this. Um, if I were to take the Laplacian of a Gaussian template and slide it over this um, corner, this is the a trace of the zero crossing that would be produced. Namely, it would bulge out in the vicinity of the corner, it'd pass through the corner point, and then it would bulge out again on the other side. And that you can see that just by thinking about um, the values in this template. Um, the negative part balances the positive part, right? The total area is zero. Um, so that if you slide this along, the, uh, it becomes unbalanced essentially when you get close to the corner here. So um, anyway, that, that's kind of an artifact that's undesirable. A better edge operator is the canny operator. And this is... Um, kind of the state of the art today of edge detectors. This was derived um, to find the optimal edge operator for step edges in the presence of white noise. So optimal here means good detection. We want to minimize the probability of detecting false edges and missing real edges. Good localization, we want our detected edges to be close to the real edges. And we only want a single response. We only want one point for each true edge point. So Canny simulated step edges and added uh, white Gaussian noise and did numerical optimization to find the optimal edge operator. And he found that the operator um, that he found is 
very close to the first derivative of a Gaussian. So a, in two dimensions, um, we take the gradient of a Gaussian and convolve that with an image. Um, calculating what that turns out to be, we get this operator. So essentially we're getting one operator for the x and one for the y. And this is the profile of one of those, let's say the one in the x direction. So the, we apply this, um, these two operators, and find the magnitude in the direction of the gradient. And we suppress non-maxima along that direction. And that turns out to be um, very good for step edges. To do this digitally, um, we uh, convolve the image with the two operators, find the gradient direction uh, using the arctangent, and quantify it into one of four directions. Then we take the point uh, that we're at and examine the two neighbors on either side. And if the, if the point where we're at has a larger magnitude than the neighbors, it's a candidate edge point. And then we would threshold um, based on that magnitude to signal an edge point or not. One other thing that is done in the canny operator is to uh, link edges together. Namely, uh, we can follow detected edge points along a curve and, and make a connected uh, curve out of them. Um, one thing to address, though, is that the threshold um, may cause the curve to be broken, namely that the magnitude of the gradient of some points along that curve may be below the threshold. Um, and other points may be above the threshold, so we would get a broken curve. A solution to this is to use, first to use a high threshold to make sure we capture true edge points, and then given those detected edge points, follow the curve um, and pick up points that have a lower threshold. So the algorithm goes like this. We find all edge points greater than some high threshold, and then follow the chains of connected edge points in both directions and pick up the ones that are greater than a low threshold. Um, so let me apply the both the Laplacian Gaussian and Canny to a synthetic image. I'm going to create a square um, Um, I'm going to create an image of a square on a um, background. So let's see. We'll put the square in the middle. Okay, so that's what the square looks like. I'll apply a fairly large uh, sigma, 15, and I'll use log plus and Gaussian to create image E1. And as you can see, the corners bulge out as we would expect. Then I'll use the canny operator and this doesn't bulge out it does of course round off the corners you know it's unavoidable but we don't have these artifacts um, in the vicinity of the corner so generally it's more accurate uh, placement of those corners